the axioms of intuition. Principle of pure understanding, says the first edition. All appearances are, as regards to their intuition, extensive magnitudes. And the second edition says, their principle is, all intuitions are extensive magnitudes. So they are principle, the principle of the axioms of intuition. So the thing on which the axioms of intuition are based is that all intuitions are extensive magnitudes. And a case can be made that the actual axioms of intuitions would then be sort of the basic principles of mathematics. Uh, and the basic principles of mathematics are based on this transcendental principle, which is that all intuitions are extensive magnitudes. Now, if we look at the text, we will see something that is true for the, the basically the rest of the chapter, which is that Kant gives us a proof which he added in the B edition. So there's a proof in the B edition, uh, and then the original text of the A edition is put after that. So let's read through this proof of the claim that all intuitions are extensive magnitudes. Kant writes, all appearances contain, as regards their form, an intuition in space and time, which grounds all of them a priori. Right? This is what we know. All appearances are in space and time. They cannot be apprehended, therefore, that is taken up into empirical consciousness, except through the synthesis of the manifold, through which the representation of a determinate space or time are generated. So, in order to have any appearance at all, what we need is, at least in part, what we need is a um, representation of a determinate space and time, the determinate space and time in which this particular appearance appears. That is, through the composition of that which is homogeneous and the consciousness of the synthetic unity of this manifold. So what is homogeneous? Well, space and time, they consist of, of bits that are all the same. Right? All moments of time are as such the same, all parts of space are as such the same, uh, and we put them together in order to get a bigger time or in order to get a bigger space. Now, the consciousness of the homogeneous manifold in intuition in general, insofar as through it the representation of an object first becomes possible, is the concept of a magnitude. Thus, even the perception of an object as appearance is possible only through the same synthetic unity of the composition of the homogeneous manifold is thought in the concept of a magnitude. That is, the appearances are all magnitudes and indeed extensive magnitudes, since as intuitions in space or time, they must be represented through the same synthesis as that through which space and time in general are determined. Uh, and let's read one more sentence because in the next sentence, Kant's going to explain what an extensive magnitude is. I call an extensive magnitude that in which the representation of the parts makes possible the representation of the whole. So Kant thinks of space and time as being extensive magnitudes uh, in the sense that if I have a, a length of time in mind, uh, if anything of some length of time appears to me, then it does so by my taking together, by my synthesizing all these smaller parts of time, right? And seeing them as a unity. And this kind of thing, this kind of magnitude, which is built up out of smaller magnitudes, is what Kant calls an extensive magnitude. So an extensive magnitude is um, something with a certain size or length or, or whatever we want to call it, that is built up out of smaller elements. And so for Kant, a length of time or a, a shape in space, any kind of figure or shape in space, uh, whether one dimensional or two dimensional or three dimensional, is in this sense built up out of these smaller parts. It's an extensive magnitude. And so really what Kant is saying when he tells us that all intuitions are extensive magnitudes is, is pretty simple. He's telling us that every intuition is you know, every appearance is in, in space and time, so it, it takes some time or it takes up some space or, or both. Um, and, and both any, any you know, length of time and any shape in space uh, are these extensive magnitudes, right? They are the kinds of things to which we can apply the concept of number, to which we can 
about which we can say things like, oh, this is two times as big as that, or three times as big, or if you add this and this together, then you get that. Right, so space and time, and therefore all the appearances that there are, have this, this character of, of being an extensive magnitude, which means that they are treatable um, in a mathematical way, right? which means that the concept of number is applicable to them. And that is basically the point that Kant wants to make here in the axioms of intuition. Right, so he has a story uh, about mathematics and the... Um, well, I would say that the, the, the main point is the point made. This is A165, B206. At the beginning of the new paragraph, Kant says this. He says, This transcendental principle of the mathematics of appearances yields a great expansion of our a priori cognition. For it is this alone that makes pure mathematics in its complete precision applicable to objects of experience which without this principle would not be so obvious and has indeed caused much contradiction. Right, so what we have here, Kant is telling us, is the justification for using mathematics in talking about the appearances. Right? If the appearances are necessarily in space and time, and if anything that appears in space and time is necessarily treatable under the concept, is, is thinkable under the concept of magnitude, um, of number, then it is going to be possible to apply mathematics to anything that appears to us. And that means that, you know, this alone makes pure mathematics applicable to objects of experience. And so we don't have to worry, Kant says, about whether mathematics is applicable to objects of experience. Right? If somebody says, hmm, well, you know, um, geometry, what does geometry have to do with the objects around me? I mean, is this even possible? Can it work? Um, no, we know that anything that can appear to me allows at least of the kind of mathematical treatment that is implied by the fact that it falls under the concept of a magnitude, that it falls under the concept of number. Now, um, the next part of the chapter, the anticipations of perception, is actually going to strengthen this claim that mathematics can be applied to experience. So let's look at that further in the next video.